أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. So we'll continue our journey through chapter five. We're going to start by discussing what is a computer fraud. A computer fraud is any illegal act where the knowledge of computer and IT is applied. So to prove that someone has uh, done a computer fraud, the person must have enough knowledge to do the fraud, enough knowledge of the computer and IT to, to do the fraud. Now, using the computer, as you know, someone can steal more of something in less time with less effort and may leave little evidence which can make things very difficult to detect. So people knowledge of computers can, you know, just do things from by sitting at home, you know, but don't have to leave um, even their bed to do certain hacking and certain uh, financial crimes, etc., using the computer technology. And it's growing because many things now are digital and there are too many uh, users and too many things that are available although the uh, technology is improving to protect uh, the digital assets from from the criminals but their efforts are also continuing so anytime you develop an antivirus there is a new virus that they have, right? So uh, the computer fraud is something that we need to have a good knowledge of so that we can protect ourselves against it, regardless of which business or which environment we're in. Uh, many computer frauds go undetected, as you can imagine, and an estimated 80 to 90% of the frauds are not reported due to fear of bad publicity and embarrassment. So let's say a big company such as Google or any big company like that, if their system was hacked, they don't want that to be in the newspaper because it would uh, have bad publicity for them. It will be an embarrassment for them. Also, there could be other people who would copy that technique. If that news is out, other people might learn about them and copy them. Also, it, it causes loss of customer confidence. So if your banks, for example, if the bank that where you give your money uh, was hacked, their system was hacked and your passport was stolen, etc., then you will lose confidence in the online banking system for that bank. So that's why if the companies find out that their company's system was hacked or something was stolen, they don't uh, publicize it because it is bad for their own business. Uh, the reasons for the increase in computer fraud is the growing number of competent users. So as you can imagine, you know, now small children uh, know how to do many things in the computers and child may not be able to even talk properly or read but they can browse through a computer to find their favorite cartoon in YouTube and so forth so there's a growing number of competent computer users with access uh, many networks have low level of security right so not everybody can spend the money to be up to date and the internet provides instructions for the for doing the fraud so there are YouTube videos and other places you can go I don't I don't encourage you to look at them but those people who do the hacking and so forth, they can find the instructions on how to do that online. And the law enforcement is unable to keep up with the number of frauds. You know, a few, a few years ago, one of my friends, he lost $100,000 due to a fraud. And when he reported, this is in the U.S., when he reported it to the police, they said that, you know, we this is a small amount. $100,000 is a big amount for me, right? That's 365,000 reals. But... For, because there are so many other big crimes in millions and so forth, the police is going after those big ones and they don't have time for the small, 100,000 is considered small, so you can understand if somebody steals $10,000, the police does not have time to go after them, right? So that's why the small 
uh, criminals. There's the criminals who are stealing small amounts. They're all criminals. There's no small cr criminal, but the small amounts that they're stealing are difficult to uh, detect. So we're going to try to learn about the different types of frauds in different places in the computer data processing that can take place so that we can protect ourselves from them. Uh, the computer fraud can be classified in, in one of these five categories, uh, input fraud, data fraud, processor fraud, computer instructions fraud, and output fraud. And this is also pretty much following the data processing cycle, input processing storage and output, if you remember. There is one extra that is computer instructions fraud. And we're going to try to learn, you know, what type of frauds can take place in each one of these places, okay? The first one is input fraud. Uh, this is to alter the computer input. So somebody's entering something in the data base, something enter, and something is being entered into the computer system, and the person uh, changes that, alters that, and this requires very little skill. You know, this does not require a lot of computer skills to do that. Examples of it would be overpaying for goods. So let's say you have a deal with the person who's paying the supplier has some type of arrangement with the supplier where the bill uh, is for 500 and they're paying the supplier 700 so this extra money can be uh, split between the person who's responsible for paying and the supplier for example uh, scra scrapping of stolen stolen inventory so if uh, inventory is stolen let's say you have uh, 10 boxes of inventory and you're supposed to enter that 10 boxes were received in the system if somebody steals one box and enters that nine boxes were received then that one box is not entered into the system and, and it's, it can be stolen. Increase someone's salary. So if you're in charge of recording the salary and so forth of individuals, if, if the person is your friend and so forth, you could increase the amount, right, when you're entering the data. Or you could also modify the amount received. So if cash was received from the customer, right, uh, and the person who's who has received the cash is also responsible for entering the cash amount into the system. They could take some money from the cash and then enter the rest of it. So let's say $500 was received. The person can take $50 and enter $450 and say $450 was received, right? And this, these are examples of, of fraud that can be done while entering the data into the computer uh, information system, into the database. Okay, you can stop and ask me uh, if you have questions, inshallah. Okay, then we have the next, which is the computer processor fraud. Uh, this fraud is uh, primarily the use of the computer, the computer resource and time for other than company purposes. Somebody's working at a, at, a, at a desk somewhere and they have the computer of the company and they could use that computer for, uh, for example, surfing the internet for personal reasons, right? For personal purposes or using the company computer to conduct a personal business, right? S selling something online or doing another business online, competing business, right? Uh, using the company computer. The company computer and the company time is given to the individual as a trust so that they would use the computer and the time during the office hours to serve the company. But if they utilize the resources for personal needs, that means they're stealing, right? They're doing a processor fraud. They're processing data or processing information with the, with the company computer uh, for non-company business. The third one is instructions fraud. And this used to be the most difficult because you had to know some computer programming. You would have to give the computer certain instructions, right? So certain calculations. So for example, you know, I give the computer the instructions to add the midterm grade with the final grade with the uh, 
quiz grades and give the final grade. Well, if somebody hacked and they know how to give the computer instructions to, let's say, double the midterm grade, for example, then that would be a, uh, an instruction fraud, right? And examples of this are modifying the software program, the example that I gave you, making illegal copies of the program. So making a, downloading a copy or making an illegal copy, right, from a program that you're not supposed to, that you're supposed to buy, right? Unauthorized use of program. So let's say you don't have a username and password to you use a particular online program, you can hack into it and use it, right? This is uh, an instruction fraud. Or developing a software to carry out an unauthorized activity. So let's say, you know, uh, to calculate bonus or calculate certain financial items, you can develop a software that would illegally carry out that activity, right? But to do any of these things, you would have to know a lot about computer programming, all right? Are you following? Is anybody there? The next is data fraud, which is uh, altering or damaging a uh, company's data files. So if somebody has access or gets unauthorized access they could steal the data they could uh, you know steal the company data secret of the business secret formulas etc a copy and use unauthorized data right sell the data to competitors so this would have to be someone either inside the company who has access to the data or somebody accesses the company uh, database from outside and steals the data right and in either case it would be data fraud Output fraud, it involves stealing or misusing the output. It could be hard copy output on a piece of paper. It could also be on a screen somewhere that you're not supposed to uh, use uh, in an unauthorized way. Example, accessing output remotely. So, you know, having access to the uh, information from a remote location, information or output that you're not supposed to have access to, right? Unauthorized copying of the output, right? So let's say there is an exam paper, for, you know, by mistake left in the uh, in the printer, and somebody takes that and makes copies, so, right? That's that's an unauthorized copying of output, or counterfeit output such as checks or you know even uh, dollar bills or notes, right? So making uh, counterfeit, making false uh, checks or or uh, bills or you know, any financial instruments. That's why, you know, sometimes when you go to the supermarket, if you give them a 500 real bill, they look for the thread that is inside, which, which is supposed to prove the uh, originality of that, of that note, okay? Then we have, in the next uh, two slides, I'm going to discuss the computer fraud and abuse techniques that, um, are used and we will continue with this in our next class. I'm going to make it a brief class because uh, many students are not here plus those who are here you have exams but we could not just skip the class. I would like to cover some material so that we don't fall tremendously behind. So here we have the first thing is internet terrorism which is uh, infusing viruses and worms to disrupt the commerce. Now what are viruses and what are worms? We're going to discuss this you know, a couple of slides down, which will probably be on Thursday, inshallah. Uh, sending viruses and worms to stop the business, right? This is a type of computer fraud that uh, businesses can experience. Masquerading or impersonation, which is using another person's ID or password. So uh, stealing someone else's ID and password and using that, right, to either gain financially or otherwise or harm the person even. The third one is packet sniffers, which is a program that captures data traveling through the internet. So sniffer, sniffing means to smell. And there is a program, if it goes, if a data file is being sent from one location to the other, this program gets the data. It does not change, it does not stop the data from traveling. It just sniffs, meaning it gets some of that data to use illegally or in an unauthorized way. The fourth one is password cracking, which requires decrypting a system's password. 
file. What does that mean? Your username and password is only known by you. The password is only known by you. The IT department does not know your password. No one else knows your password unless you give someone your password. The password, however, is known by the system. So when you enter your username and you enter your password, the system can match the username and the password together, and then they can say that, okay, this is the person who has access. This password is saved in the system, but it is decrypted, meaning it has stars or dots. You know, it cannot be read. Even if it is hacked, it cannot be read. You have to decrypt it. So if someone knows how to decrypt it, right, someone knows how to turn those dots and stars into the words and the letters and the numbers that you have, then they can get the password. It's very difficult to do. And also, everybody is con continuously changing their passwords. So it is good to change your passwords periodically. You'll get an email from the system that asks you to change the password. So this is uh, something that you should do. But if the hacker is able to crack, then they will get a get your password and username if they're able to hack it. And uh, the next one is phishing, which is a spoof email requesting login or credential update, meaning you get an email that says, you know, update login. And then it says, enter your uh, current username and password here. And then at the bottom, it will say, enter your new username and password. This, they are not interested in your new username and password because this is a false email. They just want your current username and password, right? And this email looks like it's coming from your company, but actually it is not. So if you read the email address carefully, right, it will, you will f find that this is not coming from your company. So this is called a spoof email, which is requesting your login and credential update. The next one is social engineering, which is tricking a person into providing needed information. Social engineering is when someone knows uh, certain things about a person who's using the system and they pretend to be someone that they know. So let's say you have your boss whose name is Aisha and Aisha is continu continuously communicating with you about a project. Someone knows about this and they email you pretending to be Aisha. So they have a similar email address as Aisha's, except there is a small difference. And if you look at the email address, you will see that difference. But usually people don't look at it. So they send you an email saying that, can you send me the uh, latest version of the project? And while you, you uh, are sending that, you are not aware that you're actually sending that to someone other than Aisha, right? So this is called social engineering, where somebody knows certain things about you, and they're trying to trick you to give, the, give, give them the information that they want. Software piracy is the next one. You know, everybody pretty much knows about it, which is copying software without the publisher's per permission. So if you have a CD which has the software and you only have one license, right, making more than one installation with that is software piracy, and this should not be done. This is computer fraud. The last one is spamming, which is emailing of an unsolicited message to multitudes of people. So this is your junk folder where all these emails come. They take up your time and they take up your uh, space and they are uh, harming your business because your people are looking at them and so forth. They're wasting the time and they're reading the, the message. So usually they're filters that catch the spam emails, but this is also a type of computer fraud. Okay. All right. Are there any questions on what we discussed today? Because I'm going to stop uh, here. Not many students present, and those who are present are also distressed due to the midterm exams and so forth. Okay. All right. Uh, there will be an exam on chapter five, as you know, so make sure you study this material and listen to these lectures if you're not, you know, 100% engaged, okay? And you can ask me questions. All right, I will see you again on Thursday, inshallah. Have a good day and you know, all the best with your midterms, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.